of the four, I mean, the core is still the ephemeral messaging and the ephemeral photos. That's the core of Snap, and that's the core of like stories, as an example, and Instagram, and the big thing. Like, the I was having this discussion yesterday. The spectacles are not supposed to be like a giant product line that makes millions of dollars. They end up driving just more minutes that are created on Snapchat. If you're going to use the spectacles, and I have them somewhere in my bag, they're going to. It's just going to have more time on the app, which means more advertising revenue. The same kind of model that Facebook and Google do. The more time you spend on their apps or on their websites the more money they make. And any tools, whether that's like an Android or Spectacles or whatever, helps drive that process. Did you buy this um, sort of IPO roadshow video when they're like, we're a photo company and we're a photography company and we're just so pleased. I think if they say that, then the comparison is GoPro, which has been like a wild that's, investment, no. right? Like, yeah. If you're like, we're a camera company, okay, well, how do camera companies do? Kodak and yeah. <laughs> It was a very weird position statement. I didn't understand that. I thought they were that was just a trying to position really hard against maybe being the face, Twitter. Being Twitter, yes. But they probably positioned maybe too hard because they're not going to be a hardcore hardware company. At least they probably shouldn't be. They're a software company that focuses around photography. What are they now that they have this three billion dollars in cash and they have a currency to buy other companies? Do we see them going on in a massive M and A sort of? Um, process in order to sort of fill in uh, this valuation, which is incredibly high. Is there stuff for them to buy? Yeah, I don't. I can't think of what, what it would be. I yeah. think they have done a lot of little deals, especially yeah. around Bitmoji. this kind of AR stuff. Well, Bitmoji, Spectacles yeah. was... Uh, that was the biggest deal probably, Yeah, right? probably. Which one? Bitmoji. Yeah, and those were... What does Bitmoji explain? It's, it's you make like, an avatar of yourself. Right. And then... I don't know, sorry. Yeah, no, it's pretty much that. <laughs> you make an avatar of yourself. And, but they're not using it for anything yet. Oh, it's in the app. It is? What do you do with it? You make a... You make cool avatars and cool, like, things and expressions of yourself. Like, instead of me sending you an emoji of, like, a yellow circle laughing, I Uh, send you an emoji that looks like me laughing. Ah. laughing. It's the customized, like, stickers and emojis and such. Okay. And so what do we think is the future of Snapchat? <laughs> you guys seem very down on Snapchat. Like the, the future is make more is is increase revenue and increase user growth. Because right. if their next quarter does not have a decentish jump on right. that user growth, the story of Facebook is eating their lunch will cement. But if they have a like the next quarter really matters. If the next quarter they have a good like set like a good percentage growth rate. Mm. Then the idea will be like, you know, they're going to be fine. They're going to be like the counterweight to a Facebook. But if they don't have the growth, that's the problem. That's why the stock is falling right now, because that growth rate rate is low. uh, low, And they're scared that like Facebook is going to eat their lunch. But you spent time in L.A., right? I mean, they're an L.A. company and like studios come out with a new picture next year. So they're going to keep doing that kind of thing, right? It's not it's it's a movable target. They will have multiple hits. I think that although obviously the IPO got ahead of itself, I don't think anybody would disagree. I don't think people inside the company would say they're worth what their valuation became in these early days. They had really, really good market timing. Right, the timing is amazing because nobody's gone public in a long time and everybody, let's look at Facebook's And the market's just hot. The market is incredibly hot since, you know, Trump solved our employment issues (laughs) and everybody's back to work. You know, all those millions of jobs. All those trade deals have been renegotiated. I mean, those trade deals have I mean, the regulations are just falling off. It's amazing. (laughs) I mean, you can now. taxes are probably going away. We're not going to pay taxes. You can dump pollutants in the water. We're going to save the coal mines. Everybody's got a job. What could be better? So that's good for Snapchat, right? I came here in my trump helicopter. We're going to get to Trump in a second. <laughs> <laughs> but um, here, let me wrap up the snap uh, with my position uh, after I got my guests' lukewarm positions on snap. Um, I think it got ahead of itself, clearly. I think it's a 10 to $15 billion value company. Like, if it was $10 billion, I'd buy the stock. If it was $15 billion, I'd be like, eh, I could sit and wait. And here's my theory That's of why. That's not that different from what it is. I, well, half it's you know it's like ten billion dollars less than it is now and seventeen billion less than it was a you know a day versus ago. a Facebook, right? And so if it was a ten billion dollar company, I think wow, this person came up with four very unique ideas. 
Zuckerberg and his team, you know, the gang of three, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook, all tried to kill them, tried to buy them, and then tried to kill them over and over again. And they can't kill them. And they keep coming up with great ideas, which means there is something there. So yes, you may have a God King issue in that, hey, there's one person who's reigning supreme there, and what happens to him if he goes away? But the converse of that is, he might come up with 20 new ideas given all this money and resources. So he might be, Evan Spiegel might become incredibly dangerous with additional money. He might go buy a camera company. Who knows what he's capable He could go buy GoPro. He could go do all kinds of interesting things. And he is, might, actually, that's a pretty good idea now that I mm -hmm. think about it. And he has no fear, I don't think. You know, he is now going to be dangerous. The company is not going out of business, that's for sure. Hey everybody, let me tell you about an amazing product and service I use. It's called Wistia. Video is super important. You're watching this video right now. And we do lots of video for our incubator. This is one of my great secrets. We record every incubator session. Why? Well, because recording video is not expensive anymore. We have all the equipment anyway. Then we put it behind a password protected uh, firewall uh, and an intranet. Then the people who are in the incubator can go in and watch the videos and study them. Now here's where it gets interesting. We have an audit trail. We know when each of the people in the incubator have watched their video and we require that they watch the video and we can actually see that they've watched it once, twice, or three times and we can post comments on the video. So I will go in and annotate a video for one of the companies and say, hey, at this point in your presentation, you notice you didn't have numbers to back up your claim. You might want to add a number or a chart at this point. Hey, this part of the presentation, you were telling us about your product, but you weren't showing us the product. Why don't you do a little product demo here? And I can put those very specific notes in to the video. It's, this is a video created for under 30 or 40 people, but it's incredibly effective. Video is one of those tools that people in business don't think about that often, but that is super powerful. And I know you're probably thinking about it because you need a solution that is not messy and ganky janky, and where the platform is trying to get more people to watch ads. You want a clean, crisp version of your video for your website, and that's what you use Wistia for. It is industrial strength video for business. Who else uses Wistia? MailChimp, Moz, HubSpot, Zendesk, Herman Miller, Sam Adams, and they have grown to over 330 user accounts. When they started uh, as a partner on This Week in Startups two years ago, they only had 50,000. And they give you, again, amazing analytics like we talked about. They'll let you capture emails. So now we have, I think, 80 or 90,000 emails on our email list. And every week we get a couple of hundred more. And that adds up over time. And when you create a very deep relationship with people. And it doesn't have to be forced. You can just say, hey, would you like to get information on the next episode or come to a live This Week in Startups? Give us your email. And you can have a skip button there. Or you could require the email uh, for people to watch your video. It's up to you. You have the power with Wistia. Uh, it integrates with 20 email and marketing automation tools, and you can share your videos with everyone on your list. Tons of resources to help you get off the ground, like what microphones to use, and putting video and email together, and building a lighting center for $100. Their blog is amazing at Wistia. And you can create a free Wistia account today and start hosting your videos in minutes. Just go to wistia.com slash twist. Wistia.com slash twist. I love this company. It's awesome. We use it ourselves. Mm -hmm.